Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick overview on the PAX East panel for Final Fantasy XIV, the journey to Dawn Trail, the 10-year adventure of Final Fantasy XIV. Now, there was a pretty big misconception regarding this going into PAX East. A lot of people thought it was going to be more of a live letter, but the description made it seem like it was going to be more of a look at how we got here and where we're going. So there's not a whole lot of new information, but fortunately, the predictions that I had going into this were mostly true. We got the core details that were missing from the JP Fan Festival, including the pre-order date, the early access date, release date, collector's edition items, both physical and digital, as well as a few additional comments from Yoshi P regarding their aims for Dawn Trail. And largely, I say it's a quick overview, because I don't need to overview about 45 minutes of this. Maybe, maybe more like the first half. The entirety of the first bit is stuff that's crowd pleasers. It's fluff. It, it's things that are just kind of play to the fact like, oh, how many people here played 1.0? And how many people here, you know, have all the collector's editions? And, you know, what was it like developing for Realm Reborn? What was the community perception? I mean, if you've been paying attention to any of the various retrospects that myself and many other creators have been making at this point, then a lot of these bits and bobs here are just kind of reminders of all of the stuff that have happened up to now. I mean, even just the total registered accounts, which according to this chart, apparently there were zero in a Realm Reborn. They didn't even count us 1.0 people. And then they did a slide like this, which included the release date for every subsequent expansion. You have, you know, Titan, Yoshi P making his emotional announcement uh, on stage when they did the release, the release event. Then they would move on to Heaven's Ward, where Dark Knight and talking about how Gordius was as brutal as it was. And they moved on to Stormblood and talking about the changes they made there and the introduction of Eureka. And then they moved on to Shadowbringers, where they were talking about its impact on the story and all the other in-game contents that they made at the time. Then Endwalker, which we just had and their focus on a more solo player experience. This is stuff if you haven't been playing, might be a little bit neat to learn about if you're from the before the Endwalker times, but other than that, it is just fluff. There's nothing about Dawn Trail here, and there was a lot of people hoping to get a lot of details about Dawn Trail, even though there was no inclination that that was ever going to happen at any point. Now, that, of course, does lead into what I will still consider kind of a fluff piece on Dawn Trail itself. So they start by not telling us the release date, but telling us that we will be getting the release date later in the panel itself. And they talk about some of the things you may have been hearing in various YouTube videos, social media posts, interviews, and even previous live letters and fan festival main stage events where they have more large scale duties coming. They, of course, reconfirm that there will be an exploration zone, that cosmic exploration will be something closer to Ishgardian restoration in terms of its content structure, making it so that multiplayer aspects of the game are more in the forefront of Dawn Trail versus the solo activities that Endwalker focused on. Sorry, I got a cat hair in my mouth. I was just hugging my cats for the chat after I was done. And this is, again, all stuff. Like, it's great to hear it again. It's great if you're hearing it for the first time. And it's great to kind of hear Yoshi P speak like a player, which did happen quite a bit during this, where he said that even he kind of falls asleep with the way that they've done certain things. A big one he mentions is that a lot of bosses have had their hitboxes made these giant objects and that you really don't need to it's just not as involved as it once was. You know, there's there's it, it's easier to design, it's easier to make, but it's also kind of less exciting to do as a whole. He even started pretending to do the Lalafell doze emote on stage to indicate that things like that, they've just gone too far, which is also a reiteration of something he said in an interview that we covered just a couple weeks ago in regards to the oversimplification of Final Fantasy XIV. He, of course, reiterated on top of that that it's not like they're going to go back to the Gordius days, but they are going to be looking to make certain things more, as it says here, fulfilling gaming experience. It also made mention to talk about more rewards. Now, whenever they say more rewards, I'm sure I'm not the only one who is a little bit cynical about that. We've been asking for rewards for certain activities for quite some time. This expansion, most notably Criterion and Criterion Savage were some of the big suffering points, but it's far from the only thing. Even just the way that our standard raids are structured and extreme trials and all that has come under a lot more scrutiny in Endwalker, especially as the amount of jobs we have in the game continues to increase. So improved rewards is a major, major aspect of something that they really struggled with and they really need to focus on. But the only comment that we got, and it is technically new information, is that we'll have about 1.5 times the rewards by about the 0.3 patch cycle. Now, that doesn't mean that suddenly in 0.3, there's going to be one and a half times more rewards. But from the same period of time, from 6.0 to 6.3, if you were to compare it to 7.0 to 7.3, there will be about 1.5 times more rewards. Now, more doesn't necessarily mean better. 
better? Will Criterion actually have some meaningful character progression built into it for players who don't like to do eight man raids? Will there be ra uh, rewards that better reward the efforts of the actual player? And of course, you know, with the return of exploration content, are they going to be looking towards additional armor sets that were that we had in places like Eureka and Bozia, which could uh, definitely factor into the improved rewards? Will they be increasing the amount of raid drops and raids themselves, allowing for multi uh, being a player that plays multiple jobs and not just within the same role, uh, making it easier for them? Those are the questions in specific that need answers. So a general statement of 1.5 times rewards just means we're going to be paying careful attention to where those rewards are actually actually going to go and how they impact the player itself because volume is not always the thing that does the trick it has to be placed in the correct places as well then they did a quick recap for people who didn't watch any of the fan fest just kind of what they're doing you know new jobs new characters xbox release level cap increase female hrothgar uh the new raids areas threats cosmic exploration just a quick this this was like five minutes of the entire presentation it was specifically for people who weren't up to date on everything and may have been experiencing this pax panel as their reminder that 14 existed or even their first introduction to it it was from this point on where things became pretty much entirely new and they focused on release date, early access date, and all the stuff that we were expecting to actually get from this PAX East panel. Well, some of you may remember that I did a prediction saying that the earliest possible day could be June 21st. Now, I said that before Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree had been announced, and subsequently, the comment section in that prediction video is full of people begging for it not to be June 21st. The reason for that, by the way, was the Chinese Fan Festival is August 3rd, and pattern would dictate that expansion release would be six weeks before that at the earliest, June 21st. Well, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is it's not June 21st. The bad news is you only have a week. <laughs> and Yoshi P himself on stage acknowledges that they wanted to do the 21st, but when they saw Shadow of the Earth Tree get announced, they went... I'll give you one week. <laughs> His exact words, I'll give you one week. So they, they did indeed take into consideration those of us very much looking forward to the Elden Ring expansion. And given the size of that game, you do not want to be on the pedestal in second or third place next to it. You want to have your own separate thing going on. I still even think that a week later is a little ballsy, but... That's when it's going to be shunning all of the August and September naysayers who I have been actively disproving for quite some time now with targeted information and patterns that we've been following for years. Even if Walker threw a little bit of a wrench into those. So not that long. I mean, right now it's March 23rd. So you got like just about three months at this point. Uh, and we will have a 14 hour broadcast in April and probably the combat live letter in May if they're also following the other patterns that they have followed in previous expansions. Now, moving forward, they did go off to show the collector's edition items. It will be coming with a, as it puts on the slide that will come up, expertly crafted viper statue you of course have box uh box art from amano which is a pretty normal thing up to this point you have a new updated map of the world a cloth map of the world including uh over on the left we have all the new areas as well we have an unending journey journal it's just an empty journal you can write in you could do whatever you want just put it up in the back and put it on display whatever floats your boat and there's also going to be a pen case a rollable pen case which it could store other things that aren't pens in there but it's made to be a pen case with uh, a pretty fancy design of the new areas of Tural over on the other side of it right there. And you can see Orzi on the top right and all that. So you see he rolls it up, it folds. I mean, it rolls up and then you can uh, tie the little strap around it so it's easier to carry around. And then, of course, like I said, the Amano. Uh, oh, no, I forgot that he does this. Stop. Stop tilting the box. Oh, no. Is he done? Is he done? Don't tilt the box. Okay. We're good. All right. Whew. It was blinding everyone with that the entire time. Good thing he only had to put up with it once. And so here's again the reminder of all those items that he went over. And then I know you're thinking about digital collectors and pre-order. Don't worry, we're getting to that in a second. Uh, so 
much to my surprise, and I guess this largely has to do with Solution 9 related stuff, but our uh, collector's edition mount, the digital collectors, is Ark. Straight up Ark from Final Fantasy IX. Now, Cruise Chaser is technically Ark from Final Fantasy IX, so they went with a little bit of a recolor here for this one. Uh, the lore behind that being that Ark is actually inspired from the 1980s Cruise Chaser Blasty video game. And then in 14, his name is Cruise Chaser Blasty. That's been a whole like circle that's been gone around a dozen times. And here you go. You got Ark. There you go. So that's going to be your mount. Uh, not a horse, very surprisingly. But, you know, it's it's also we kind of have it in some capacity already. So take with it what you will. Now, there's also a Garnet minion for from Final Fantasy IX and a Chocobo Brush Pictomancer weapon. Was really expecting a Viper weapon, but I'm perfectly OK with the Chocobo Brush on the right over there. Now, they specifically say that there's a reason for all the Final Fantasy IX related stuff and they can't go over it. But given Solution 9, I expect that's where we'll see the majority of that inspiration. Uh, so <laughs> just please look forward to it, I suppose. Now, in terms of the collector's edition stuff, this is a little different than what they did for Endwalker. Now, Endwalker completely did away with the box uh, or completely did away. I'm sorry, with the disc for a physical edition of the game. But they also did away with the combo collector's edition end game. There was only an agnostic collector's box in Endwalker, and then you had to buy the game separately. You could purchase a bundle of the two together, but that was it. It wasn't its own collector's edition. Here, there is the outright collector's edition for Windows and Mac only, which includes the game, the collector's goods we saw earlier, and the deluxe edition in-game items. Then you have the collector's box itself, which is platform agnostic, meaning that if you're not on Windows or Mac, or if you just want to buy the box for whatever reason, then that's the one that you would buy. So don't look for a collector's edition for PS5 or Xbox or Steam. You just want to buy the collector's box if you want the physical stuff on any of those platforms. Then there's the Digital Collector's Edition separately, which includes the Arc Mount Garnet and the Chocobo Brush, as well as the game itself. And then the Standard Edition game itself. Now, reminder, there are no physical discs. So even if you just buy these standard editions, they are just going to be digital codes for Dawn Trail itself. Uh, so that's a little different than last time, but in a similar vein-ish. It's just they're actually doing the actual Windows and Mac edition. Now, they are also updating the system requirements again. Specifically, the minimum requirements. It used to be a 6700 series i7, and now it is a 7700 series i7. The reason being is that they announced last year that they would be discontinuing support for the 6700, so they figured they should probably raise the minimum a little bit above that so they have an actual supported CPU as their minimum system requirements. Now, how it will run if you're on any of the earlier stuff, you know, that's to be determined. Some people are running with even older stuff than this and are hoping that they can kind of get away with that for a while i won't speak on how that'll work i don't want to but it is what it is they also briefly went over the mac system requirements there are a lot more people that actually do game on mac nowadays they're not as much of a joke as they kind of were back when i was in college and you know kind of my earlier stream days but even still they also have the system requirements and all this stuff will be posted separately uh, on its own site that explains all this stuff as well um, and then you also have the actual pre-order items as Zidane Minion and Azima's Earring. So these are earrings that will give you a 30% EXP bonus. It says up to level 90 on the earring, but it's actually up to 91. Trick with those earrings, they actually work for 90 to 91. They still provide the effect at that final level. So even if you're someone with Omni 90s at this point, then at the very least, you won't just be using it on Viper and Pictomancer. You'll just only be using it for a level, really. Uh, now, on top of that, the pre-order itself will be available on March 26th, which will be here in a couple of slides. Now, that is going to be releasing regionally at different time frames. So Japan is getting it at 9 a.m. JST. Europe is getting it at 9 a.m. GMT. And North America is getting it at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So bear that in mind regarding where you are in the world. You have three days to remind yourself of this and set these schedules for yourself, depending on the region. Now, on top of that, if you are on Steam, pre-orders begin at 9 a.m. Pacific globally. Now, I would assume that the Steam pre-order is strictly the game and the digital collectors, whereas the collector's box I would assume is the 9 a.m. time because the collector's box and the collector's edition 
well, the collector's edition itself is Windows only. I would assume the box and the edition would go live at the same time. So take with that what you will, but put these times in an alarm. Make sure that you set them early. If you're worried, set all three of them into your alarms and just try to check in case something goes wrong. Plenty of you out there have had to purchase concert tickets or collector's editions and had to go through the ringer to do it. So I'm sure many of you are already well prepared for any such eventualities, but still doesn't mean that you'll get one. Good luck. Uh, and that is not that's not the last major piece of information. There is one more piece of information that we were also expecting, and that is the Final Fantasy 16 crossover release date. We knew it was in the first 10 days of April. We've known that for several months now, but it is confirmed to be the first Tuesday of April and that of April 2nd. It'll be running until May 8th. So you have a little bit over a month in order to get it done. These quests normally only take a couple of hours, two, three at most, if you're taking your sweet time. So it's not something that's going to take a heavy committal from you. And I'm sure they'll rerun this again in the future if you're someone who is absolutely unable to play during this window. But don't expect for it to reappear for quite some time into the future. Maybe something with the PC release date. But honestly, I don't expect we'll be waiting that much longer for the PC release date anyway. So... Maybe not. Just know that this won't be a one time only thing. They've rerun stuff like the 15 collab and stuff before, as long as it's not on the Mog Station. As long as the, if the items go to the Mog Station, the event never gets rerun. That's why the Final Fantasy 13 event is never rerun, because it's all available on the Mog Station. And with that, that was the last major piece of information. Some people in the crowd were yelling, where's the job action trailer? Where's the benchmark? And it's like, yeah, no, we knew we weren't getting those things here. The odds of getting though well, the job action trailer was a zero eventually. The benchmark was like an unlikely thing to have uh, for those looking for that information job action trailer likely in may benchmark quite likely in may too i think with the the update to the graphics they'll probably do what they did in shadowbringers and for shadowbringers they released the benchmark after the combat live letter which was in may so i'm expecting they'll do that again here but i'd still say keep your eyes peeled april 12th is the 14 hour broadcast and there should be a live letter there i wouldn't be surprised to see it come from that i'm just not banking on it all right. So those are the dates that we have locked in and what we are looking at. And that covers everything from the PAX East panel that we got for Final Fantasy 14. So with that, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned. Of course, anything that pops up, whether it be old news, new news, whatever, you know, I'll get, I'll get you covered here. Anyway, let me get back to my Twitch chat before they keep rioting while I don't pay attention to them and the YouTube side of chat, too. I don't want them rioting while I'm over here trying to record a YouTube video for all y'all, you know. So I'm going to get back to them and take care of what I got to take care of. Besides, I got more dragons to dogma this weekend. Anyway, with that, thanks for watching. And until next time.